everyone, Rich Carlton. Welcome to another awesome Div Filmmaker Training. I'm going to press the button. There we are. It's a lot of Richards. Too much Richard. You'll need a permit for that much Richard. And Margaret's there. Hopefully Margaret is there. And is Bruce yes, Wayne there? Is. Bruce Wayne, are you there? I'm here. Bruce Wayne is there. It's very awesome. Welcome, everyone, to another awesome day of FileMaker training. So today is a kind of a conversation. Claris uh, did an event. So back in September, Claris did what I would loosely, everyone loosely calls the Claris Engage Keynote, except it really wasn't a keynote, but it was kind of like a webinar. So not really a, a dev developer conference, but kind of the keynote if there would have been one, right? And it was a really, a, a really great conversation that was had. It was an immediate conversation followed by a follow-up conversation by the Vice President of Engineering, Peter Nelson, who has really uh, communicated well um, and I think uh, is probably working pretty closely with Brad on, on communicating and to the developer community on what is coming, what's going on, because um, there hasn't been any like, major splashes in the FileMaker community for a while, at least from the developer perspective. Claris might think they're putting major new product splashes into the product every week. I don't, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know what they think, but I can tell you from the developer community standpoint, it's been like a lot of incremental fixes, a lot of incremental improvements. And so we had 19.1 and 19.2 and 19.3, and those together were a lot. Then there's 19.4. We might talk a little bit about that today if we have time. I'm thinking probably towards the end. That's why I brought Jacob Taylor, who's here as well. Jacob Taylor, are you Welcome. there? Good He's there. Me. Awesome. Great. So let's uh, talk about this a little bit. So this, the presentation is right here. I don't know if I can click the link and it will go to that or it'll pop it open or it'll play it. And you'll hear people talking or whatever happening. So, But the short version of the – so, Garrett, this gets into the conversation a little bit about what was – being said, I guess I could copy this. Can I open this as a, yeah, let me open it up as an external link. So we're posting everyone the video here. And what we're wanna do, if you don't wanna sit through this one hour of presentation, it's basically Claris uh, kind of going through their guiding principles of what they're trying to do, the challenges that they're having, um, and basically what they're working on. And um, if one of you could grab the uh, picture, uh, but basically Claris is working on kind of this new engine idea, this new engine that conceptually someday could be pretty awesome in terms of extending FileMaker and making it scalable, more scalable. Listen, FileMaker is already plenty scalable, but in the event that you happen to be a company and you want a thousand simultaneous people to beat on FileMaker simultaneously, it might not get there without some fancy footwork on your part. Um, but most organizations that never have a thousand people access a single data system one time. Even a big company like Ford or Toyota. Toyota, I guess, used to use uh, FileMaker. Maybe they still do. But, um, you know, the issue is that they'd never have, you never have a thousand people accessing a single database. You have databases or systems within different departments, marketing, product management, customer service, tech support, warehousing, production, supply chain. Every different department can have their own FileMaker application running really on their own server. Um, and that way you never really get into an overload, but it makes sense. You don't have a thousand people in the same company doing the same job at the same time, needing to see the same data. So uh, a lot of times scalability, it's a thing that people say, oh, we need this, but then they never use it, right? <laughs> Very rarely is it ever seriously used. So um, Garrett, how would you summarize the conversation? If you wanna, if we can bring up Discord, I don't know if your smiling face is there. Are you showing your face anywhere? Where are you? How do I find you? There you go. There is Garrett. There is Garrett. There is Garrett. There is Bruce Wayne and his altered ego there. So, Bruce, tell me about what you're thinking about here. I, th I think it was a pretty good follow-up session. Um, my overall take was that um, it really wasn't much new information I, um, from one of the pr two previous sessions that you already mentioned, um, but it, it was kind of more of if I had to summarize it, it was kind of more uh, narrowing down like the focus on what people should expect from the rev one of the new stuff as they're calling it. They keep calling it new stuff. So it doesn't really have an official name yet. Um, 
In fact, I want I want I, I complimented these guys on this that before I com I will do it again. The short version of the conversation is that they they whenever someone asks a question that they don't want to answer or they don't have an answer, um, it's refreshing to have someone not try to do a song and dance about. Well, you know, we'll take that under advisement. We'll have a team meeting. We'll discuss it. Uh, Brent, yeah. uh, they would just simply say. Uh, they would say something like, uh, for example, there was a conversation about licensing. Are we going to change the licensing, yep. right? And 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 it was asked twice. And the one conversation that I uh, answered that I remember Peter Nelson saying was that uh, we have to sell it. That's all he says. We have to sell it. It's like it's like uh, a, a Big Mac at McDonald's. We got to sell it, right? And the point yep. is, is that he didn't have an answer. We knew he didn't have an answer. We knew we knew that he knew that he knew that he ducked the question. So it's not like. Uh, and there's no point in really drilling down, but sir, but sir, don't you really think there should be a licensing change? It means that Claris is having a conversation internally, trying to figure out how they want to handle this. Um, and I, th I think that's one of the things that's most refreshing for the developer community with him being on there is, I mean, just just yesterday's conversation, you know, we got to sell it. Well, that's something we have to solve. Uh, he said, you know, we don't, we don't know, uh, you know, uh, we don't. We haven't thought about that yet, but I don't see why we couldn't get there. I mean, every there was no fluff. It was if he didn't know, he was he was saying I don't know, and but that's a great idea, and we're gonna work our way to get there. It, it was very open conversation. So, yeah, very refreshing to have that happen, which was really great. And that happened a couple times. Like, what are we calling it? Ah, not sure what we're calling it. What's the licensing change? <laughs> Is it gonna stay the same or change? Ah, we gotta sell it. We we have to sell it. The yeah. ultimate obvious, and in, in some ways very simple, right? I, I, but it means a lot, right? Sell more. We got to sell it. Sell more of it. Sell a lot more of it would be great. Um, so what I want to do is time, kind of talk about the adjustment in trajectory and expectations. I've asked Margaret to post a photo here, but basically kind of this conversation, trying to understand mentally what Claris has been saying, because they're, I think what they're trying to do is they have this really awesome new system and from a from like a five-year trajectory on it, it it's going to be able to do a lot but in the near term tactical kind of like what do we get over the next say three months six months that kind of stuff this is it right here so i initially thought from the last conversation that that claris was going to be working on this new engine this new MongoDB, and then they would give us the option of using the engine, et cetera, et cetera. I think those are all things that are coming, but they're probably farther down the road. In the more near term, it seems the best way to think about FileMaker, this new whatever, the new stuff, is what Jacob Taylor, Jacob, you're here. You want to explain your sidecar uh, metaphor for us all real quick? That would be really yeah, great. Sure, sure. And uh, thank you, Margaret, for posting that. And it's orange, which is my favorite color. Yep. Um, but the the basic idea that I, like I, it's not from the discussion yesterday, um, but but from the previous uh, I almost called it an interview with Peter Nelson, where when he was describing what they're doing with the server software, it sounded like a motorcycle sidecar. Like you've got the engine, it's already driving. We're doing stuff. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add this thing onto the side that lets us right carry another person or do another job. Um, and so it's not, we're not replacing the motorcycle. It is an accoutrement to the motorcycle. It is an addition to it. Um, and so, mm, yeah, on the long term, maybe it begins to eat some of the lunch of other parts of the product. But in the kind of time periods that everybody's looking at here, which is six months or a year, something like that, what we'll end up with is this little like additional tool that we have to, you know, there's like five or six tasks, maybe that it'll do well or something. It'll do better than FileMaker. Okay, great. Right. We'll use it for those. Right. So the, the, so the analogy here, this is FileMaker. This is the FileMaker platform that we've been using. It's a motorcycle. We all get on it. We drive it around. It, ha it gets incremental little new things on it periodically, um, new little features and things like that. And we drive it and, and we've been living with it for many, many years. So now we have this sidecar. It's almost like FM sidecar or FM and, you know, whatever, side, you know, side, sidecar motorcycle. And it literally bolts on. It's an optional bolt on. Right, you can bolt it on. The motorcycle is functional without the sidecar. It will be functional without the sidecar. The sidecar is not required. Um, and so it's this thing that goes on the side, 
and but eventually it'll be more than a sidecar it might end up becoming a whole vehicle down the road in which case are you going to want to be on the motorcycle or do you just want to like kind of like crawl through the window over here on the side and into the window of the car that's a you know instead of a sidecar it's a whole vehicle attached over here right at what point it becomes that way i i think that's probably a better way of looking at it um because clearly they have the the horsepower and the interest and the capabilities uh, to build a bigger sidecar with more stuff and to point where it has more wheels and more seats and then maybe it has its its own you know entire vehicle um, but Claris has to kind of get to that point they have to what would you say Jacob they we had to wait for their coders to code is that what your analogy this morning? yeah yeah it's it's because where they're at right now is they they've shown us where they're going uh, what they have seems to be generally coherent as far as a future vision for the product uh, you know some of the details are going to get filled in etc um, but like for the next at least three months and probably closer to six we're sitting here waiting for Claris engineering coders to code like right. that's they have to write the code that does the thing that we're all waiting to see and that it sounds like they're going to let us play around with when there's a – we'll say maybe it's early and slightly broken, but uh, you know, early enough to play around with for sure. Um, we'll get it at that point. Wonderful. But between now and then, we have some twiddling to do. Yeah. So. Now, now, there are two things that were brought to my attention that, that was pointed out by – one pointed out by uh... – <laughs> One point out by someone of you or one of my staff, I don't know who it was, and then the other one that was uh, Claris uh, uh, pointed out, and it's about this issue of positioning and licensing. And so people said, hey, you're going to license this. How's this going to work? Blah, blah, blah. Right? Is this another product? We have to buy another product. What does this look like? And it's, it's kind of uh, funny. The conversation was because the point that was made to me, and I didn't even think of this, but then it was like when someone said it, it was really obvious – um, what they've done is that Claris has this new engine, this new tool, and they've picked what they picked and the, what they're going to deliver in this sidecar. So we have we've actually not even talked about this, but if you pop open the video um, and talk about kind of like this, what Claris did is they said, let's pick one low hanging fruit item that everyone complains about in the FileMaker platform. Let's solve this one issue with our new database engine, and it'll be a bolt on sidecar that can go to FileMaker. And and so this thing is basically a, a form creator. It allows you to drag and drop uh, and build a web form, like a survey form or a registration form. Um, and and so it allows it – so basically it, you drag and drop this thing. It automatically creates the schema for you, which might or might not be good. It's like add-ons automatically creating schema. might be good or the road to hell might be paid with good intentions. But – but it builds it, the schema for you. So you drag and drop this thing. It puts it on the web mag automatically. And then you can just glue it into FileMaker. And so it's collecting data for you in FileMaker. And, of course, the flip side of that would be also the ability to provide data. So this is a public-facing web page creator. Normally stuff that we don't do with WebDirect. Um, it's, it's, WebDirect is not designed for public-facing pages. It, it, they don't like it. They dislike that. They've even said that in writing. They don't like that. Um, and their licensing isn't complementary towards that. So, um, But this is a tool that would go make a public-facing page that is going to load data into FileMaker. And I'm assuming you could also do one that would allow you to read data out of FileMaker, right? Like input your information, fetch this record, display the information, right? Um, I mean, that's more work, but uh, that's kind of the basic issue that people have had. Like if, like right now, as a FileMaker consultant, I can think of a bunch of customers that would want to use this immediately if they could do it cheaply. Drag and drop, it's done. The current way of solving the problem, in all reality, is that you break out some PHP, a little data API action, and you talk to uh, a FileMaker server. That's how you do it. Um, you can do it through FileMaker Cloud too, but it's a real hack uh, and not something we'd recommend. So... So you end up talking to FileMaker server on Linux, Mac, or Windows as your server. And so it's doable, but you have to get a programmer in there and do some legit kind of code, code, code programming, right? Garrett, right? Yes? Feel free to... Yes, sir. It, it, feel free to uh, object to anything I said. So, no. so, so basically, we have a... So the first cut of this thing 
and this is where someone brought this point up to me, and I'm like, uh oh. And so what someone says is, so Jacob goes, hey, it's a sidecar, and then and then Robert Halsey and Peter they're talking about this, their first kind of effort at this, the low hanging fruit they're going to solve with this thing, is this kind of workflow automation. It's a terminology they're going to automate you building kind of this uh, form thing. And if you put together the idea of a sidecar and you put together the form thing together, that's basically kind of what Claris Connect is. And they're like, well, are, are they rebuilding Claris Connect or is this part of Claris Connect? And I don't know if that question was asked yesterday. I didn't hear that question asked. But I instantly went, oh, sh right, because they're building – essentially in my mind what is potentially a third product that kind of encroaches on another product's area and that product is not done well in the market um and so you're like well what do we do with this and where does this go right this is where if i had some kind of interaction with clarice i'd give you more of a steer but i don't know right i don't know what they're thinking on this um yeah i think go ahead i think it's got it's definitely has potentially overlap with clarice connect and also with WebDirect. And I think Peter acknowledged that on yeah. the call yesterday that potentially it's going to get that po to the point where some of these products tend to see some overlap. But his his point that he hammered home yesterday was you have to look at each of the products individually and what their strengths and their weaknesses are. And use use FileMaker Pro for its strengths. Use this new stuff for its strengths. Use Claris Connect for its strengths and kind <laughs> so, of pick. So, so really, I need to draw a picture of this, but if you had this new thing, whatever the new thing is, and you have the motorcycle, which is FileMaker Pro, if you actually have Claire's Connect as part of the picture, it's like another sidecar on the other side of the of the motorcycle. It's like a sidecar on the left for Connect and sidecar on the right is a new thing, right? Yeah. And, the, the thing about the new thing is it, <laughs> it, it, it you can drive by itself. I mean, it, it doesn't require FileMaker Pro. It's got Mongo on the back end, so it's it is its own system. Okay, you can but then, stand but then, up, but then, you then can you, stand up a form by itself that yeah. dumps into its own thing. If and, it's and its whatever. own independent self, then that is Claris Connect. That is the definition of that product, without a doubt. It's a de so th so. Are they rebuilding Claris Connect? I don't. I I now we're in the area of legitimate speculation. It wasn't even my idea, but very clearly, if it if this thing is designed to operate independently, Claris Connect was supposed to be the product that Claris would sell to everyone else on the planet who didn't use FileMaker. I'm hazarding guesses here, but I think this thing builds on top of Connect basically. So you can decide whether or not you think Connect was a commercial success, and I doesn't sound like it was. Basically, is the short version, um, but. If you think about what they showed in the video, the little demo that they did of building this app out, mm -hmm. how they're thinking about that is we have all these services that we can just integrate with. And so if you make, we're going to call it the new stuff, smart about what it needs and when, then you take the idea of a workflow automation, which is you being able to drag steps into the middle of this flow, right, and do that stuff. The interface for that is much better than Connects was. And so if you take that with the combination of being able to build out the database schema underneath it, which is the other part of this that we need, um, in a context where it can already talk to FileMaker. I don't mean like how Connect had a, there was like a FileMaker server connector or whatever for Connect. Um, this is like the data is in FileMaker. I mean, it's in Mongo, yeah, whatever. But like, that's you know, for, you're going to be able, you're going to be looking at it through Pro and other things, WebDirect even maybe, I, whatever. I'm sure that'll work. Um, and so that's what you end up with. It's it's you audit you. It's it's the grander vision of workflow automation. I can drag and drop database tables, third party API services, plugins, whatever to get my little thing done, to yeah. do the little data processing yeah. set of steps I need to do. Well, so, so, so it sounds like either we have two sidecars or they're actually going to glue this and reimagine Claris Connect, but they haven't said that yet to anyone. Um, so maybe, there's two. Maybe, maybe this is a way to get developers to finally buy into Claris Connect. Well, okay. So <laughs> if, that, if they that, can that... find some way to actually license it. Without. Yeah. So 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 let yeah. let me let me give you back another. And this is public facing data. It's not much of a secret about this. So so the other day I got this email from Claris and it it from senior management. I guarantee it was blessed by them. And it was like, hey, by the way, so Forrester or Gardner, they did this. They're always doing surveys of low code stuff. And Claris Claris 
FileMaker didn't rank very well in there. And so I get this email from Claris trying to explain why they didn't rank very well in there. And the gist of the email, and I feel sorry for the guy who had to write it and put his name on it, and he knows who he is, and he'll probably see this video, but um, basically was that, well, we have FileMaker, which is great. We have this totally separate product called Claris Connect, and our competitors have kind of integrated products, so the API connectivity workflow stuff is part of the product. And because Gardner, they weren't reviewing the entire platform, they're just reviewing a product, the FileMaker product versus other competing products in there. FileMaker by itself doesn't have this API drag and drop stuff, right? And, and so they got absolutely hammered on this review. So uh, it was one of those sort of things that we haven't resolved this yet. But the, the intent of the email basically said this is something that we'd like to improve upon or better integration or whatever. We don't think this will be such an issue in the future, but it's not resolved yet. And so once again, there's there's this pressure, external pressure from uh, outside of Claris to integrate these things. If for no other reason, <laughs> they, they don't want to get roasted by Gardner or Forrester or whoever did the review on this stuff going future. When there's a review next year, they want to have more of an accurate review uh, that FileMaker is this complete thing, right? So then what are you going to do? Is it more of an integrated thing? So then they add it to FileMaker, add it to the platform, and it's one license fee, or they add the FileMaker and they jack up the prices, right? So, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's a, it's a very sensitive topic with the developer community. It's, I think, a sensitive topic with File, with Claris, FileMaker Inc., File, Claris. And uh, I don't know where they're at or where they're going, and I don't have the insight. I can just tell you, if you connect the dots, you know, if you, if, 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 if you put your marshmallow in the fire and it catches fire and it burns to the ground, you don't have much of a marshmallow. When you stick your marshmallow in the fire, you might want to do it differently next time, right? So, you know, I, I it's just, so, yeah, so. Okay. Um, Maybe. That's what I'm hoping for. I, just to repeat my comment from earlier repeat when we were it, discussing that on stream. Time. Yeah, as far as far as like, I, I I know other people have been more or less down on on Connect itself as a product, and um, there's been probably some very good complaints about it being its own kind of standalone service. But the thing that I actually liked, to, or the the thing that I liked about it was ruined by the licensing that they picked, which is that actually they have like 200 services that you can just drag and drop connect into each other. And, you know, the interface could be a little more polished. Like I said, I like this new one that they're kind of showing off. It's, it's really nice. It looks like it'll be easy to use. I think that's generally great. Um, but, but it's the, the existing product connect is like Zapier or something else, except it's got everything in front of you already. You don't have to figure anything out. It's just, oh, I need these three boxes. I need some key codes over here. We plug some stuff in and bam, we have form submissions into FileMaker or whatever. They have 200 services. There's, there's other stuff to do with it. And so, shoot, I think people have even done weird stuff like calendar integrations with it to, to post back and forth between the Google APIs so they don't have to deal with writing all that in FileMaker, which yeah, like that's awesome actually. Um, but it wasn't ever brought anywhere else, which is the one thing that I kind of drives me up a wall. It wasn't, I don't know, in pro or something. I was imagining some kind of weird, you know, uh, like the database. What is that? The, the tab where you can view all the base tables and the anchors and the buoys and stuff like having one of those where you could drag and drop API connections or something would be amazing. Amazing. Yeah. That was where we were talking about some of that yesterday. If you were in file, <clears throat> manage, manage database. database. Yeah, I think you have relationship like, graph. You know, let's That's have a, called. you know, like a, I don't even know if it makes sense here, but being able to add on. I, I want literally, I mean, I don't want this interface because this thing's like older than me, but like as far as I can <laughs> take a, you know, drop down list, pick a service, drag it as its own little configuration box out on the layout, mm -hmm. start wiring fields together. Like that would be cool. You know, it was I've never funny. seen them do anything like that. It was and funny. It's just, that would be neat. That would be neat. Before the current management team uh, came in, uh, there was a keynote, and, and Robert Halsey will remember this, and they were prototyping the idea of integrating with Zapier, right? And De Garrett, you remember this, right? I'm showing a starting point. I'm showing that left yeah. pane uh, or the left panel. Um, oh, and it was going to go right it, there. It was going to yeah. go fields, objects, add-ons, and then there was Zapier. It was a tab right here, right? 
it was like, ooh, ooh, make, make, yeah. And so that kind of integration was amazing, right? So the update is that there's going to be some sidecar action that's going to go in. It quacks and acts a lot from this initial kind of world, like a kind of a new connect kind of thing is the way it's being positioned initially. But this, this sidecar, while it kind of quacks like connect right now, has got the engine and the capabilities to be a lot bigger and a lot more than that right so yeah so it's a segue so uh, do we have any questions about this this is uh, interface is older than me and uh, that's not strictly speaking well jacob were you born 2000 1999 89 85 90 90, 90. 90. Nah, this interface was uh 2001 so quit quit being overly dramatic it's only 20 <laughs> years old strictly speaking um I like that interface. I, you could try to make it better somehow, but it does what it does. And um, if you put it on the web, it'll be – one thing about when you do web stuff, it's not very compact. Everything's kind of like – looks like doofus spread out with size 14 fonts. And sometimes you need things smaller so you can get them all on the screen anyway. So um, – I think the, I think the thing that I would like about the web stuff is exactly what they were doing in the demo yesterday, which is the automatic alignment of everything. So like when we have yeah. people go in and clean out the graph, that would just yeah. either it would no longer be necessary or we'd have a button <laughs> that would just be like try and align everything okay. and like put the weird stuff in the corner. Or All right, so there's on YouTube Lynn, sorry I missed your question here. Lynn had a question. Any thoughts on where the data captured by the public facing page would be stored? Um, so, n well, n no, no, initially it's MongoDB. It's, it's MongoDB. Yeah. It's well, just, once, that's what I mean. Once they get the, once they get the, whatever the little bi-directional. Here, here's the reality. Can I make a, can I make an analogy here? So this is really, so this, this is not a great analogy here. If this, this little side cart here had its own little engine down here or motor and a little steering wheel in here. Um, and you would be a better analogy, right? Because the sidecar initially starting off pretty lightweight, but it's got a serious giant V8 horsepower, I don't know if you're a big electric person, big, you know, 20 kilowatt motor stuck on the ass into this thing. It's got a lot of juice. And so initially the sidecar will interact with Mongo. And then what they're trying to do is the interface. We talked about this in September interface between Mongo and the FileMaker back end, right? Um, and having which, those things talk, which they haven't they haven't shown or or detailed any of that yet. Yeah. But it was very clear that from day one, um, you would basically be able to interact. So the, to answer the question, the data is going to dump into some sort of Mongo backend. But he was very clear yesterday that from day one, you're going to be able to interact with that Mongo data just like it's a FileMaker table within your FileMaker database. So somewhere on FileMaker server there's going to be a way to Suck connect these in. data sources together. I, and I, we don't know what that what goes into that process, but there's gonna be some way to do that. Yeah. One, one thing to note that he did say yesterday, potentially version one of this product is going to be only in cloud. It will not be in on-prem, most likely. He yeah. didn't say that matter of fact, but he said we have to prioritize something, so I see it only being in cloud one as the rev one. Yeah. Not that that's going to stay that at all. He said it will definitely come to the on-prem server version, but but as far as version one, that was probably not realistic. So uh, Christian Monkeybread just said, so Monkeybread guy, the smartest person I know in the room right now, he says, isn't that the ESS Plus of the keynote from last time? Yeah, so mm -hmm. they're trying to figure out how to connect. Here's the rub. ESS is ass slow and I can't say that big enough. It's horrible, okay? <laughs> and um and so whenever Claris was talk calling it ES their interface ESS plus, I just went, okay, so much for scalability. Because the problem is is that when you use a word like Claris used to have this thing called instant web publishing. And if you think about it, instant, yeah, web publishing. Yeah. Makes perfect sense. Great name, right? They got rid of the name because the product it was attached to was not a good product, right? And so ESS, when you say the word ESS, it means SQL uh, connectivity to FileMaker. Uh, it also means it's limited to what it can do. It also means it's ass slow. And so, um, um, so anyway, so I always get, whenever people say things like that, I get nervous because if they're recycling the same tech, 
um, it's going to be a it's going to be dead on arrival. So I'm assuming they would re-engineer it to be make it quick, right? Because any of this integration, they can't be going, hey, we got this amazing Mongo DP. It's like right, 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 and then <laughs> and then you go to FileMaker and it's like, oh, connecting the records, and it's like one record, and then you're watching a progress bar, two <laughs> records, and then three records. Oh, get a cup of coffee, four records, five. Records. I mean, ESS can be not quite that slow, but damn near. Um, and so it's 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 great for what you need it for. It has limited application. They test the hell out of it in the certification test. We'll be talking about that. Yeah, the reason is why we have SQL Dave's and other databases in MBS plugin. Yeah, well, it's got to be fast and it's got to be transparent. If you have to, if you have to, if you have to wire up D, DSNs and like that. And if you don't know what a DSN is, then you're not a certified FileMaker developer. If you don't, uh, DSNs, d uh, ODBC, d uh, uh, data network, whatever, it's all the identifying stuff. So FileMaker can talk to, or any two ODBC systems can talk to each other. Um, d DSN data source. DS DSN, DSN, d not DNS, DS DSN, uh, yeah. data source net name. There's a whole DevCon. I did a DevCon session on that in 2005 on how they even do that right how they even do it like basics right i mean that was back when jacob you were in diapers and stuff right whatever but point is is that um if if they've got to make this drag and drop simple and super reliable and quick as hell right it cannot be any stupid stuff so anyway uh yeah i need to brush up on my ds in theory i guess i could uh but pretty much it's still on the certification test which i know it hasn't changed Provide an address, provide a username, provide an ad password, and hope the hell it works because the drivers are compatible. Seriously, you can do that, and you, everyone cross their fingers, and you watch and see if it works. So it ain't changed that much, Ruben. Okay? I would uh, Christian Schmidt says, I would expect Claris bundles a Mongo server with the FileMaker server installation and have MongoDB on the same, uh, use the same authentication as FileMaker. That would be great. I see them as tying it into the existing admin console. Like you got a, yeah, a tab of your FileMaker databases and a tab of your Mongo. Yeah, we databases. need to have. A, so I have my microphone here, my trusty microphone. Christian, can we quote you on that? Can you quote? Can you provide a quote for us, Christian Schmidt? Are you willing to go on the record and say that? Uh, yeah, yeah, I would. Christian I would says ship. no knowledge. I know how I would do it. Aha, uh -huh. right? <laughs> yeah, put Mongo inside a container and ship it with FileMaker as a, a thing. All right, cool. All right, other questions, because if, if we're done with the uh, wild and crazy speculation of which we know nothing, then we will move on to uh, the 19.4. Uh, we're going to start a little bit of a 19.4 conversation. G Garrett pointed out we might run light on stuff to talk about today. So, uh, David Angel, if you say over here where you can see the comment on screen, I would like to see no difference between web and pro, right? Well, that's what they try to do with WebDirect, and it kind of, eh. So, the problem is they're fundamentally different pro. pro uh, capabilities and i think um the biggest one that that uh, peter pointed out yesterday you can want what you want but you know horses if horses were you know like you know dreams or whatever that the horses or wishes wishes or horses um a filemaker pro application even on go is a multi-window multi-window application that has very specific behaviors a web browser application is not multi-window and so WebDirect tries to fake its way through that by having virtual and visible windows that you don't see. Um, but it has, you know, kind of these forced limitations, right? So um, that's what they're trying to reinvent. Basically, long term, this thing gets so good that it just displaces WebDirect, right? And then from there, what happens, right? Who knows? Uh, cool. Yeah, they're, they're, they're different platforms with different problems. And so yeah. I like the fact that they finally embrace that, that they are different platforms and they need to be different products. I mean, that's, I, if they're, if they were the same, you know, if, if they could be interchangeable, then they would have found a way to do that by yeah, now. They've done it's, two it's cracks not happen. IWP and WebDirect. Pivoting to 19.4, more of a Jacob Taylor conversation. So Jacob Taylor, do you want to, do you have the readme from the 19.4? Do we want to go through the basic uh, readme uh, documentation for 19.4? Uh, sure. Do you want to start with pro server? We'll start with pro, uh, something easy. So we got 19.41 release notes. Welcome to 19.4.1, everyone. Hello. Um, by the way, 19.3 did work with Monterey already. That's the 
uh, the Eau Claire said they didn't have any known bugs? Nope. All right, so option number one, shortcuts. Yep. You can use your shortcuts app. You can tie a script to it. Mm -hmm. So you can shout at Siri and have her do FileMaker things for you. Um, there's some sort of a thing to be able to pass in parameters as well. I don't know if that transfers all the way through from the shortcuts app or how that works, but so it seems, it seems like it I'm trying to understand the value of this, right? I'm trying to understand the value of this. So when we built, this is the same problem. One of my engineers had a problem today. And they basically, the only way to solve the problem was to hack the CSS under the hood of FileMaker Pro on the user's machine. The problem is if you fix an issue that way, um, it's not saved in the file and it doesn't get shared with everyone else that's using the FileMaker app that you built. The whole point of FileMaker is you build it one place, everyone gets to experience it. Anytime you do something specific to your computer only, that has real limited utility, right? Um, and so I think yep. this is something you do on your computer and then everyone else can kiss your ass. As a developer, I want to build something and if, if it saves time for me, I know it'll save time for other people. I want to package it and get it out there and replicate it to other users. Ideally put it in the app and it gets shared everywhere. I don't, yeah. I don't, with the <laughs> shortcut stuff, I don't know. I'm not a person that uses voice command. I don't. Uh, I, 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 mean, I don't I use, use it because it, text. I love that. But. It butchers all the time. Siri's a disaster. And I don't want it listening to me in my conversations during the day. Uh, I, I believe you can share shortcuts. Can you so, share I mean, if you, within the FileMaker app? I mean, that would be great if you could do it. No, no, within the file. No, the, from, from correct. All right. So, so I'm going to. I'm just, I'm sure yeah, I'm just not sure. I think it's neat. I think it's like the next. It's it's like they added machine learning to Go, and I don't know what that means or how to use it. And also, I'm sure someone finds that fantastic and is in love with the feature. It's it's, it's like I'm the URL protocol person. available on the Mac. Uh, yeah, you know, URL protocol on the iPhone and iPad. How you interact with other apps. It's they're they're bringing that to Mac OS, cool. basically. So you can have ah you okay. Know, so I wonder if I so does that so does that merely mean that sorry I'm just gonna ask uh, so does that mean I can I guess these these shortcuts are like very tiny workflow automation type setups so I could trigger a series of apps and maybe the thing yep. at the end is FileMaker gets spit a, 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 a script is fired with a parameter of data from whatever yep. the last thing in the chain. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Oh. Exactly. So you can go in a script workspace. You could say, "Hey, I want these three scripts available in shortcuts." And then from shortcuts, you could say, "Okay, whenever I get a text message from this person, call this script and pass it the parameter of this, and then it interacts with FileMaker and spits back something else and opens maps and gives you directions or something like that." Like, but you, but it has so, to, but it has to be hand stroked on each user's system to get this to work, right? It so, has to be correct, but I'm saying, like you, as a developer, you could set up a shortcut and then sh and then share it with the other users, and they could then, uh, like you know, import this recipe, if you will, into their shortcuts. Mm -hmm. uh, and John and John says in Discord, you can, for example, fire a FileMaker script when you exit a geofence. Would be another thing that you could do with this. Yeah, yeah, you could do that with Go already, but this is allows you to. This do is it on the Mac OS. On the yeah. Mac OS. Yeah. Yeah, another one-sided conversation, right? I hate one-sided conversations. Listen, Microsoft sucks, but you can't ignore them, right? Right? Because half you here are Microsoft people, right? So, I mean, we, even the people who use Windows know that Microsoft sucks, right? Um, and so the problem is, though, is I don't believe in leaving half the audience out of the conversation. I love all of you. I don't only, I don't love half of you. When Christian Olsen shows up here, you're pretty sure he only loves half of you, right? The win, the Mac half. The rest of you guys, you know, I mean, you, you take your money, but really, that's what they always say. Yeah, all that money you're saving, go get a Mac, right? And, the, and then three of you will go, yeah, I'm getting an M1 Mac Mini or whatever. So... But but I want to love everyone. I don't like to love only half of you. Oh. There is no I'm Linux the, half. There's only two percent of the people that use Linux. I was gonna say I'm the Linux half. You're the you're the entire <laughs> that's, Linux. That's me. Half. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about. Let's move on uh, to uh, maybe we'll get a yep. demo of this. Chris, maybe Christian Schmidt can explain to us how the Monkey Bread plugin can make this so much better for us. That would be great. So that would be. Let's just leave that for Monkey Spread. 
Monkey spread yep. will be here in two weeks. We'll be good. Uh, so custom awesome. We, yesterday we talked about OAuth and Azure. So this opens it up beyond uh, OAuth and Azure, right? Yes. Or uh, it opens up beyond Azure, Google, and Amazon, right? Which are test questions. There you go. Oh, it's Alliance. Sorry, it's Alliance. Well, um, well, you can look at Wim de Court, see what he said. Yeah, there you SEO. go. Yep, yep, there you go. There's what it looks like right there. Yeah, so you can. There's your uh, screenshot. Oop, where'd it go? You went off the screen. It's gone. Nope. Uh, oh, it's. Oh, I can't. Yeah. What it's, are it's you? So, it's so fuzzy. I can't really hardly see it. But yes. Oh, sorry. Yeah, their screenshots are also kind of fuzzy. I was just showing the admin console. Um, yeah, well, so they added an extra what? extra stuff. In There's it. a list. Yeah. Ooh, it does both. It does OpenID Connect and OAuth. Mm. OpenID Connect, I'm not familiar with that, right? What is, it is that? It's a related, it does the same thing, but it's a that's, different. That's the new stuff where you can basically it's, put in the settings of what you want, right? Yeah. Well, it's, no, it's, it's, it's a... It's, no, well, it's the foot. It, so OAuth is like a specific set of technologies in a flow. Yeah. OID is a. It's like all the stuff packaged. So, and if you look up here, sorry, I'm gonna move it. Um, ah, if you have right OpenID Connect, you have all. You have like all of this crap. So like what this is what I was looking for was the list of providers. Auth Zero is one of them. Um, Okta, Ping, and yeah. get the fourth one. Um, but they have like pre-built for them basically. Yeah. Um, you can do this kind of thing where every single little detail of all the post backs and all this stuff, you put it all out, you get to put your, this is your icon endpoint, which is, that's your photo. So like on our FileMaker Pro, we have the little Microsoft icon and it says log in with Microsoft. You can put your own icon in there now. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, there it is. Hold right there. It's the bottom two. So there's two technical specifications, Garrett, that are supported. Guarantee this, if it's, not updated in the certification test eventually gets added to it, right? Yeah. That's yeah. right here. You have so. your scope and points. Nice. Yeah, this yeah. will be cool. Pretty cool. Um, oh, yeah. And then there's all kinds of other changes for whatever. But that's the main. Um, and then the other thing to note here is you have a new get account type response, which is custom OAuth. There's, you know, Azure, Apple. And, and again, that is Google. absolutely on the certification test. That 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 get function no, is on not the Apple. Test. What's the other one? Oh, Amazon. I'm sorry. Amazon, yeah, a Google. Amazon, Google, and Microsoft. Yeah. yeah. Someone was asking about Facebook. Could does I could I guess you could use OAuth to uh, authenticate with Facebook. I guess. Uh huh. Yeah. The the little login with Facebook buttons, which you may or may not have seen around the web, those are actually OAuth. It's just you're using Facebook as the provider instead of something else. Um, and so I, it's like. I think I probably wouldn't do it, and there's kind of pro there's probably really good reasons not to. Actually, not even like I'm paranoid about Facebook or whatever, but just annoyance and like you can't control any of the data type stuff. Um, but it may be possible actually with this new, uh, with all the all those fields, it may be possible to actually construct a thing where you could like log into FileMaker with Facebook accounts or something. Um, that seems like I don't know why you'd do that, but. It'd be like logging into Pro with <laughs> Facebook or something. I yeah. don't. Yeah. <laughs> Which uh, I'm told actually that people pay for. Is it Facebook Workplace? Is that what they call it? It's Facebook for for work or whatever. They have it's collaboration tools plus Facebook and groups and that kind of stuff. So. Yeah, as long as you want your uh, your everything that you're doing for your workplace to be uh, ripped off by uh, Facebook and sold by Facebook, yeah. I mean, I mean, real. I mean, Facebook is really bad, and we're not talking a little bad. It's really bad. My yeah. dad, who hates the government looking at his stuff, promptly sticks every last detail of his life into Facebook. So I, I don't know what to do for people like that. All right. So what else we got? So session identifier. Yeah, this is a good one. This is a yep. good one. I haven't played with this one yet, but this is good. So here we go. Walk, walk us through this, Jacob. Yep. So, yeah. So this one, you – so, like, probably actually their example is the best one here, which is – so if you want to be able to deal with multiple users that have different sessions, like, you know, I have a work computer and a home computer, and they're both logged in, you could have it set like in your startup script that you spool up where you set their session identifier like as part of login so that you can go look on the FileMaker server 
admin console, just as an example, uh, and know which of the two Jacobs is the one you need to get rid of. Because otherwise it's just going to say, I'm the user Jacob with the login Jacob, and that's not super helpful unless you happen to know off the top of your head like what my IP is or something. Um, and that might be true at RCC or something, fine. Well, but like well, they, well normally this is a like really that. horrifically bad uh, could that those yeah. things right there are like CX five one three or two two four one five and this stupid and they and they yeah. change every time and yeah. they're randomly generated and if you put that into your logs like I don't know what you're doing because that's basically useless text because it's going to be anyway so you can do something more useful with that which is wonderful um, WebDirect is the best example of something where that's really bad but um, I can think of several others that would be kind of just neat to like string up string in um, correct for, to, to to better differentiate who and like which computer so actually that's probably the big one it'll probably be which computer enhanced features faster sql wow I, I didn't know about see this what is this so yeah so this is neat actually so it used to be when you set up these uh SQL commands, you would basically rip the whole table out, which is one of the reasons it made it slow. Um, and you can now actually narrow it to just what you need. Um, Kyle Williams, right. where's Kyle Williams at? He's not here, of course. What a slacker. Okay, the, today is his day. All right, we need to get someone to demo uh, a demo for us of this. This would be great. All right. Wait, this is only to query information for schema. Yep. Uh, oh. So we have base table fields rather than every... Oh, file micro fields includes every table occurrence. Base table field. So is this going to speed up the internal communication for... That seems like it would... Because there's always going to be like a metadata gathering step as yep. part of some of this stuff and usually it's like if you do a big operation you don't care because it's one time basically yeah we um, need to have a uh, that up that would be cool too use those tables for audit and it may speed up that to yeah the query to list of the list of fields that's exactly what it'll do so rather than get in the file maker fields table you'll do whatever the base table is that you're trying to query from and then you'll only get that one instead of everything all of them forever okay ruben posted a picture ruben is that the revised oh there you go. there's a session identifier yep. mm -hmm. so that's interesting and so he wrote that yeah he said he posted that earlier he said what he can he you put a bigger screenshot on that for us uh for me like the complete screen ruben do that for me and post it so i can see the whole screen on that because i like to see the before and after on that we're going to drill into this a little bit more the 19.4 stuff um uh, in about Monday. right after Thanksgiving. However, Monday after Thanksgiving. Yeah. However, we want to uh, we want to uh, we're going to try to get uh, <laughs> we want to get uh, Kyle Williams to do uh, talk about this stuff. That'd be he'd love this. We got a bug fix in the data the execute file micro data API script step. Uh, so you can where now you at? use where are you at? Where are you on, on your my screen? screen. Oh, what, right yeah. here or where are we at or down here? No, it's at the top. Uh, offset. The the, yep. you can do limits and you can do offsets and limits now from the execute file micro data api script step was not possible previously or did so not so this is yeah so th this is that script step that allows us you know we haven't talked about this in a long time we haven't done this one a long time either in fact i haven't seen this in shoot 18 months um i need mm -hmm. to go and chase this down that would be another good session to do margaret are you there execute file micro data api script step uh, live stream that would be fun okay and then this is uh the photo here let me see if i can make this maria, bigger. maria really liked that one she yeah used that was her thing quite a bit she liked that um session identifier yeah so there's hard to see here there's a uh let me see if i can open the original here oh there it is so there's this um the session identifier and account name the old one just had the account name or did it yeah the session identifier this part's new here i think yeah completely it, lab it labeled it differently it labeled it differently well. yeah which is great. So, uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll dive into that a little bit more. That's good. Sweet. Cool. Uh, and, then, and then the rest of this whole thing is outside of the data API thing is lots of bugs fixed. Okay. So, 
Uh, yeah, so we're gonna go through this. I highly little... recommend people review this stuff. Yeah, cause... we're gonna we're gonna be partly what we're trying to do is give this thing like a week to set with people testing it um, and see if there's any uh, what we call Jacob Taylor calls scream testing is when people squeal loudly. Mm-hmm. And then what we'll do is when we come back, we will uh, uh, on that day we're talking about the upcoming broadcast schedule. Let's talk about that real quick. I'm gonna press the button here. Here's the upcoming broadcast schedule. I want to remind everyone that t- tomorrow. Friday, Wim to court. Really interesting. Heidi Porter, Chris Moyer. There's going to be three of them banging away, uh, talking about um, ransomware. And it's really kind of a two-day conversation. Uh, Heidi and Chris tried to figure it, fit, fit it into a one-hour or 50-minute presentation. I just don't know you can do justice, so I said two days. And then next week is Thanksgiving here in the United States. Yeah, wrap it up. Give me a good summary here so I can like close this out with a great summary. Okay, great summary. Uh, just following up yesterday's conversation, once again, I, I think it's still very promising and still very refreshing uh, to hear the way that, uh, you know, the FileMaker Brass is communicating um, the direction that they're shooting for. Um, and with the timeline that they're giving us, at um, the very end of the call, he said we are months, not um, years, to being able to play with stuff. Um, so that, you know, Whenever that new stuff uh, ships, it should be soon and should be exciting. So um, I'm excited for whatever whatever it is because I think it's it's the most promising um, new functionality that they're giving developers in a while. So cool. All right. Well, that wraps up today. See you. It's potentially expired. Look at the back of that car right there. Looks like the FileMaker license has expired. Sir, I need you to step out of the vehicle. Sir, sir, step out of the vehicle. Sir, 